In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look at the Lightfire wood-burning stove from Wicca Technologies. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to point out that this stove was sent to me for testing and review, and I did not pay for it. In a moment, I'll take you down to the desktop where we'll do a more in-depth analysis of the Lightfire stove from Wicca Technologies. But before I do that, I just want to explain that this will be the first in a three-part series where I go over each of the stove offerings from Wicca Technologies. Each stove has enough features and information that it deserves its own independent video. Okay, now we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll demonstrate how the stove is assembled. I'll do go over its specifications with you. I'll demonstrate how it can be used with different fuels and of course then we'll get outside and do some testing. Before I demonstrate the assembly of the light fire stove I just wanted to show you what else Wicked Technologies included with it which is this manual that does go over the assembly as well as the operation and lists some of the accessories that are available for the stove. So the stove arrived in this nice quality cotton sack, quite heavy duty, very well constructed, simple fold over design closed with velcro at the top. Inside of the package are the stove components which I'll show you quickly. So obviously this would be the front plate with the feed port and the Wicca Technology symbol cut in it. This would be the back plate which is identified with the pictograms for safe use on it. There are two identical side panels, a fire grate, and the pot stands. So let's show you the assembly. So start with the back panel again identified with the pictograms. Take the corresponding side plate. Now I say corresponding even though they are identical. Uh, what I have done of course is once I start using the stove and it does get darkened up on the inside, I like to continue to put it together in that way. So when you do that, you do end up using one of the plates over the other. But you know, if you reverse them around when you for the next fire, it's not going to make any difference. This is just aesthetic, trying to keep the outside of the stove a little bit clean. So let me take the two side plates. Now the tabs are cut very generously in their tolerances. That makes it very easy to assemble these. There's, there's no tightness, no resistance to putting it together. Now, once you've got the back and two side plates in place, take your base plate or your fire grate, which has three tab projections on three sides. They will match up with slots in the bottom of each of the side and back plates. But once you get those in plate, again, they're cut quite nicely. A little tip for putting this together is to make sure that you push the, the fire grate to the back as much as reasonably can. Then that makes the assembly of the last piece being the front plate much easier. Now to do this, you just hold it over the four tabs. This can be a little finicky at times for me anyway. And it's just a matter of lining up four tabs at the same time. But once you do, it will drop into place. A little bit of jiggling, there we go, I can see the issue. A little bit of jiggling required, and boom, it drops into place. So once you've got the, the front plate on, then assemble the pot stand crossbars for the top. They'll match up with notches on the four plates, and you can leave it, use it in this configuration, or you can take those pot stands and run them in parallel. And there is an advantage to that we'll talk about in a few minutes, and that works also. Okay, one last thing I want to say before we move on to the operation of the stove is picking this up. You can pick it up quite easily and safely from the back panel, obviously before you have a fire built in it, or from either of the side panels, but don't pick it up from the front panel because if you do, the stove will unassemble. One last thing I think that I will include at this point is if you do want to move the stove while it is lit, you can use the crossbars provided that they're not too hot to hold, and you can place them in any of the side ports, line them up with the notches, and then you can pick the stove up and move it as required. All right, I'm going to reposition the camera back a little bit so I can go over the operation of the stove. All right, before we move on, I almost forgot to include the specifications for the stove, so let's go over that now. So the stove comes in at 9.9 .9 ounces, which is 282 grams. It is 4 and 3 quarters inches to the very top, which is 12 centimeters. It is 3 and a half inches wide, which is 9 centimeters. And the burn chamber measured from the fire grate to the top of the stove is also 3 and 1 half inches. The stove is made from a proprietary alloy combining stainless steel with titanium, giving you the benefits of both products. I'll put all the information that I've just stated in the show notes below.
All right, let's start with using the stove with wood, which makes sense, of course, since this is a wood-burning stove. And I just want to show you a couple of things to start with. Um, you can load this stove either with a traditional bottom-up burn, where you put your fire starter in and your wood in on top through the feed port, and then build the fire up from there. Or you can preload the stove for a top-down burn, either by stacking your sticks vertically or horizontally, both have their pros and cons. For the bottom-up traditional type of burn, you can have much more control over your fire because, of course, you control the amount of fuels going in. Then if you want the fire hotter or less hot, then you can add the amount of fuel uh, accordingly. Now, the only issue with that, of course, is that you're going to be constantly feeding sticks in to keep the fire going. With a top-down burn, you don't have to feed the stove as often, at least not until the original fuel has burnt down, but you don't get as much control over the heat. One last thing I want to show you with the use of wood is it's a good idea to keep your sticks down to about a six, maybe seven inch long. This is six inches long and with that I have most of the stick inside the feed port or inside the uh, the chamber of the stove with a little bit hanging out but if the stick was much longer it would start to get heavy and drop out. So you know it's a good idea to keep your sticks to a relatively short length. Six inches and under would be ideal. All right after using with wood the next fuel most people would like to be able to use with their stove is alcohol. So let's do that now. So I'm using a Alex burner, which is pretty much identical to a Trongia burner. So what I like to do is take the cap, place the cap in first on the fire grate, place the stove on top of that, and then put the pot bars back on. In that configuration, I get a pot gap from the top of the burner to the bottom of the pot of one and one half inches, which is pretty much ideal for efficiency using alcohol. And I get a boil time of seven minutes, 25 seconds. Not really, really fast, but you know, still very respectable. One alternative position you can use with these crossbars is to take them out of the crossbar fashion and set them up in parallel. So in parallel, you have no metal in front of the flame coming up to touch the bottom of the pot. And it does make a small difference in terms of the fact that you're not, the crossbars won't act as a heat sink in this position. So it's just an option, depends on what you like to do. Now, I want to point out that you can assemble the stove with some of the options that are, that are available. And I'll show you those as I go along. The first option that I want to include is a plate for the Trangia stove. It'll take me a minute to assemble the stove with the Trangia plate in place, but I'll show you the benefits of doing that now. So to install the optional Trangia plate, all you do is take the bottom plate out, or you can leave it in, it's just a little easier to reassemble with the bottom plate out. And there is another set of, of slots this high up on the stove to allow the accessory plates to be inserted, in this case the Trangia plate. And now I can take my Trangia burner, drop it in, because that's what it's designed to do, put my pot bars back on in either the crossbar fashion or in parallel. And this changes the pot gap from the bottom or from the top of the burner to the bottom of the pot to one and one eighth inches. But it does decrease the boil time to seven minutes and five seconds. And that's a bit counterintuitive because usually the inch and a half is the better height. But what I think is happening is the solid nature of the burn plate around, or sorry, the plate that holds the trangia reflects some of the heat back up and keeps it contained to this uh, area without losing any out of the sides and especially out through the feed port. So it keeps the heat concentrated on the bottom of the pot, giving you that slightly faster burn time, which is cool. All right, now having you, you showing you alcohol, what I want to show you now is how to use this with uh, solid fuel. So I've reconfigured the stove so that the fire grate is now in the upper set of slots where I had the Trangia plate a minute ago, as you can see, and it brings it up much closer to the crossbars. And this is where the solid fuel setting is. Now, a word on using the fire grate as it exists with solid fuel. My experience is, is that you're going to want to put something underneath your solid fuel in order to keep it from dropping through. So a bit of aluminum foil or maybe a little cup of some type to hold that the uh, solid fuel in and then of course you can place the bars on top and that brings you into a good relationship with the bottom of the pot just by putting it on that. Now alternatively 
if you want and you have a few dollars to spend, you can purchase a solid pan, which also, and I'll, and I'll explain more about what these are accessories are all about in a few minutes time, and I'll show you the whole works of them. But you can replace the fire grate with a solid plate like this, and then you don't have to worry about putting some type of a foil cup to hold your solid fuel in. Okay, so I've shown it to you how the stove operates with wood, with alcohol, with solid fuel. Now, I just want to show you how it can also be used with wood pellets and then with a uh, gas burner. Okay, I've reassembled the stove with one of the optional plates that you can purchase for the light fire. And that is a pellet plate that has small holes, or small enough to keep pellets from dropping through, but pro provide enough airflow for a very effective burn. So you can't load a whole lot of pellets in the stove because the height of the feed port in relation to the plate won't allow you to get put a whole lot in there. But you can quite easily get one full cup or 250 mil volume of wood pellets in there. And with that, I can get a burn time of 30 minutes. Now, I guess you could extra, add extra pellets on top of that if you wanted to at the end or start feeding wood on top of it. It all depends on what it is you're using the stove to do. So wood pellets work very effectively, but you do need to have that optional wood pellet plate inside of the stove to make that work. All right, let me show you how it can be used with gas burners. So I reassemble the stove with the Trangia plate again in the higher slots. And with it set in this position, you can then use the Trangia gas burner attachment. Now this is not a Trangia uh, version of it. This is actually made by a company named Boulin, but it is virtually identical in every way. In order to use this, drop the gas hose down, drop it into place in the, the gap intended for the Trangia, and now you're ready to go. There's just enough room for the crossbars clearance on top of the stove right there and you can use it with a gas burner attachment. Now this is how the company intends it to be used with a gas burner but I did discover another way and using a different gas burner with the stove that may provide you an option if you're interested. So I've reconfigured the stove and used the original fire grate and put it in the high position, the slots on the sides. And if you notice, you can see in the center of the fire grate, there is a square hole about one half inch across. And with that, I can attach another burner from another stove. And what this is, is one of those uh, inexpensive stoves out of China that I took the body apart. And what you're left with is just the burner and the feed hose. And of course you do need a remote feed. So if I take that apart, now I do have to be a little bit careful when I hold this. Obviously the, the more efficient way to do this would be to put it in the plate before you assemble the stove. But I wanted to show you how I could do it this way. So holding the, the bottom part of the feed so that it projects through the bottom of the, of the uh, fire grate, I can reassemble the top half. All right, now the burner itself comes very close to the top of the stove. I cannot use the crossbars in cross fashion, but I can set them up in parallel to make this work. Now your, your burner may differ here, but this is what I need to do to make this work. So now I don't get a whole lot of clearance, but I do get enough from the burner to the bottom of the pot, approximately one half inch, so not a lot, but again, enough to make this function. So I just wanted to show you that as an option. So if you didn't want to buy uh, the drop-in plate for the Trangia that you can use with an alcohol stove or with the, with the uh, Trangia gas burner, then you can do it with the original one with a modified gas burner. All right, so one thing, Ooh, that's a uh, that pretty much covers all the types of fuels with the exception of charcoal which I will mention because I have tried this and that is you can also use this stove with charcoal so I mentioned a minute ago that there are a number of options that you can purchase for, to go with the light fire stove and let me show you those so in addition to the Trangia plate the solid fuel plate or ash pan depending on how you're going to use it and the wood pellet plate there is a heavy duty grill which can be used on top of the stove and it has tabs on all four sides which will slide into the notches for security 
sits in there quite nicely. Now you can grill whatever, well, whatever it is you want to grill on top of the stove. So those are all available on the Wicca Technologies website. And something new and quite interesting to me is a set of pots, or stands, if you will, also called pot holders in, the, in their terminology. And I've seen multiple uses for these things, and I've played with them quite a bit, so I just want to demonstrate these. These can be purchased as a standalone for another purpose, which I'll demonstrate in one moment. But if you set those up, you can get quite a big pot on top of this stove. Again, it fits into the notches on top of the stove and you again you can get a large fry pan even a dutch oven whatever you feel you have a need for it also gives you quite a bit more distance from the, the top of the stove to the bottom of the pot if you're looking for more airflow i haven't had a, an issue with uh, airflow on this stove but it's always nice to have that option now i the other intention for these crossbars is to use with a trangia, possibly with some other alcohol stoves, but you can see the way they're cut on the bottom that is designed to sit in top of the alcohol stove and provide you a, a near perfect height of just over an inch to the bottom of the, your, your pot from the top of the stove. I will tell you, however, in operation, it does provide for a fairly slow boil time. And of course, that's because of all this metal acting as a heat sink and then as a radiator, you lose a lot of your heat from the alcohol stove reaching the bottom of the pot, but it there is available. Now this was probably or likely not part of the design, but these teeth on top meant to be just a little bit of a grip for to hold onto the pot. They're not sharp enough. Well, I, you might be able to do a little bit of wood cutting with them. I don't think that's their intent is wood cutting, but you could do a little bit of wood cutting with them, but they are plenty sharp for scraping things like fat wood or bark or anything or making small shavings on the side of a piece of wood if you're going to light your fire that way. So one last thing I want to do before we get outside and do some testing with the light fire stove is to show you a few other stoves in comparison just to get an idea of the size. So the first stove I'll bring into the picture is the Bush Box Pocket Stove, the original stove from Bushcraft Essentials. It goes together in relatively the same way. Now, they, you can see the Bush Box is a little bit smaller than the light fire is. Uh, quite close, but you know, still a little bit smaller. So let's take that one out of the picture much closer in size and almost identical in many ways in terms of size is the LF from Bushcraft Essential. So this is maybe a little bit taller and I think the overall width is just a slight bit wider but otherwise very close in size. And the last one I'll bring in is American Made Stove which is familiar to most of you which is the Emberlit Original, this being the titanium version of the stove. So you can see again they are quite close in size. Now the top of the stove for the Emberlit is the same with the cross, but the base is a little bit wider and the stove is a little bit taller overall. So I just wanted to give you a few comparisons. Now let's get ready to get outside and do some testing. All right, so I have the Wicca Technologies light fire set up in my fireplace here for wind protection. And also, of course, because as you know, the bottom of the stove does not come with an ash pan. So you need to be sure of what surface you're putting it on. And as all I've done is put in some birch bark as a preload in the bottom, a little bit of pine twigs, spruce twigs on top of that, and a little bit of uh, fat wood. Now, I probably wouldn't need the fat wood except for the fact that it rained the last two days, which is the only reason I'm even allowed to have this fire is because of that rain. And uh, so all I'll do is see if I can get it lit from the side. It will take a little bit of time to migrate in. And what I'm doing, going to do, of course, is once the fire is established, I don't think I need this extra fat wood here. Once the fire is established, I'll put on some sticks. Part of the reason why I wanted that fat wood there, as I said, the uh, woods are wet, and this is wood that I left behind from before from other stove tests and it's damp and I split it down, hopefully small enough and dry. It feels, it's cold, I don't know if it's wet. And we'll see where that goes. Taken off nicely. Once I start to see the sticks start to settle down a little bit, I'll feed a few of these in, maybe a few from the top until I have room to feed them in from the side feed port. Great airflow. 
quite ready yet. And then of course once I have an established fire going with my fuel, then I'll put my pot on. Thought this would be just a little interesting thing to show you. You can see that the wood is in fact wet with the steam or the wetness boiling out of the end of the stick there. So, but the fire is still going well, so I'm not, uh, not too concerned. All right, uh, put the pot on. I think likely because of the design, it's not gonna do have a real heavy effect on this on the draft or the airflow, and it doesn't. There's a little bit of smoke, but again, the wood was a little bit wet, or is a little bit wet. Uh, a little bit, I will tell you, this is a hungry little stove. It will go through wood quite quickly, so keep your supply at hand, moving up from the smaller tweaks to the bigger sticks as you can, so your fuel gets a little bigger. Um, once again, you can probably see the wetness coming out of the end of the wood. It's what I have, it's what I have to work with. Without doing a lot of wood processing, which is exactly what you're not supposed to have to do with a small stove like this, is to do a little what a lot of wood processing. So I'm thinking now in looking at this that uh, the airflow, while it may appear at first glance to be almost too much, almost too great an airflow, uh, this is where the benefit comes in. So had the airflow been slower than this, I don't think I would have got the critical mass of heat necessary to keep this wet, damp wood lit like you can see it is now. So despite the water that's coming out of the end of those sticks, the wood is still burning, still producing heat, and still bringing my water to a boil. And uh, as you can see now, the smoke is pretty much, well, with the occasional wisp, but it is a wood stove, so they all create smoke to some degree. So, yeah, very impressive performance. As I said, hungry little stove, but excellent airflow. Uh, the only caution I would have is in setting it up and make sure you're on a fire-safe surface. All right, when that water comes to a boil, I'm having a cup of tea. So let's go over some of the pros and potential cons for the light fire from Wicked Technology. So to begin, what do I really like about this stove? I think it has to be the simple design. It's just a four-sided stove that slots together very quickly, very easily. No complicated issues putting it together. It's not a hinge design, so it's not as easy as some other stoves that way. But I've not had a problem putting this, to sto this stove together at all. What else do I like about it? I like its weight. For the size of the stove, even though it's not a pure titanium, because it is a stainless steel titanium alloy, it is still very lightweight, especially for the thickness of the metal, which will contribute to the durability of this stove. I've experienced no warping after, I don't know, maybe a dozen fires in this stove. So I think it's well designed in terms of the metal that's being used. What else do I like about it? I like the airflow. It has a lot of airflow, not only through that open fire grate on the bottom and the feed port on the side, but also the cutouts right here at the top. That airflow contributes to being able to get a good, hot, roaring fire going quickly, especially when conditions are less than ideal, such as when it's quite cold, or if my wood is less than ideal, such as being damp, as you saw in the demonstration a few minutes ago. Now, that same airflow can be a bit of a con with the stove in that it's it's a very hungry little stove. It takes quite a bit of wood to get this, not to get it going, but to keep it going. So you're gonna to have to have a constant supply of small pieces of wood on hand to feed this stove in order to use it. My recommendation is, is once you get the stove going with small pieces of wood, is that you have some larger pieces that you can feed in. There will be enough heat to keep those small, larger pieces lit, but that will slow down the burn and keep it from consuming the wood too quickly. So other than that, I don't think there's much to say negative about the stove. If it had been a hinge design, it may have been easier to use, but I can't see that as really much of a, a, crit a critique of the stove. I like it just the way it is. I think the other thing I like about it is the fact that you can use accessories and other pieces from the Flex Fire sto 4 stove in this and that allows you to get a little bit more out of the stove. And of course you can buy them as accessories on the Wicca Technologies website. Okay, I think that's everything that needs to be said about the light fire from Wicca Technologies. I will be putting, as I mentioned before, all the specifications for the stove as well as where you can purchase it in the show notes below. And if you have any questions, please put those in the comment section below. 
Until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.